After understanding the unit circle and the links between all the tri different trigonometric um, functions, it's now important to see how the angles within the unit circle relate to each other. So because of the behavior of the angles and the coordinates in each um, quadrant, we, you will notice some specific patterns that will appear, um, some repeated values that will appear. This will also make sense if you already know the graph of the trigonometric ratios as some of the values repeat because of the wave uh, type of graph that these trigonometric functions have. So um, in this video, I'm just going to explain the basics of looking at all the angles in different quadrants. In another video, I'm going to go through uh, three different types of examples and how to use the facts from this video. So I'm not going to go into the intricate details and the theory behind some of these things. I just want to give uh, the important facts of these. So. Um, you will notice that if you test any angle within here, let's say you take a 45, well, let's pick another number, a 32 degree, and if you pick um, any different numbers, let's say um, 73, and then you go a bit further and you pick, um, uh, let's say 200, then you go a bit further, and let's say you pick 291. So if you evaluate the trigonometric ratios at each one of these angles, and let's say pick different ones as well, you'll notice the patterns in terms of the signs. And what happens is that in the acute angle section, so from the zero to 90 or from zero to pi over two, all of your trigonometric ratios are positive, sorry, trigonometric functions are positive. So all of them are positive. Whatever angle you're gonna take between zero to 90 degrees, your sine is positive, your cosine is positive, your tangent is positive. And then if you take anything in this uh, second quadrant, so from 90 until 180, so these are your, your obtuse angles. So these are your acute angles and then you have your obtuse angles there. Um, then you will have the um, only sign will be positive. Everything else will be negative. And you can extend this further. Try it with the reflex angles here. So these are your reflex angles. And um, only tan will be positive here. And the last one, only cosine will be positive here. And you might have heard the mnemonic, it's all students uh, take calculus, okay? So it goes all students take calculus and you have to go anti-clockwise and that's an easy way to memorize that this is positive. Now it's easy to remember where they're positive but also to know where they are negative. So if I want to know where is cosine negative, well I know it's negative in the second and the third quadrant. So that's also important. Now we also come to another um, fact of uh, linking our acute angle with other angles. Um, now, it's not going to make much sense in this video, but when I explain it through examples, it will hopefully make sense. So, um, we have what we call associated um, angles. So, what uh, associated with the acute angle. So, what these are is if I have an angle theta here. Okay, so this is my acute angle. We're always going to refer to the acute angles or the first quadrants because this is our basic. And then we build up from there. So if I have the acute angle and I want to know um, what's the associate angle in the second quadrant. Okay, I want to know the associate angle in the second quadrant. This associate angle has the same... Um, it sort of has, this is roughly saying, the same properties as this acute angle. So it's another angle here that would have the same properties as this angle. Um, and instead of like testing out different numbers, due to the symmetry of the circle, the other angle here that's associated to this precise one that you picked is just going to be 180 minus theta. Because this is your 180 and then you're just going to go above. So um, this blue one is here, 
okay and the way you find it is not by adding or calculating all of this all you have to do is take 180 and then minus this theta so um, obviously my drawing is not exact so we are we are looking at the same um, size here so roughly there okay um, so this is 180 minus theta well what if you want the associated associated angle in the third quadrant uh, what you're gonna do is take you're gonna take 180 plus your theta so this will be this angle so again these two this green angle and this theta have um, similar they they um, they affect your trigonometric uh, functions in a similar way. So that's why they're associated. So um, this is 180 minus theta, and then this is 180 plus theta. And then the last one, it goes here. Oops. Roughly, you get, you get the picture here. Um, and the way you do it is no need to go all the way here. You actually just go 360, oh, wrong arrow. The arrow has to go anticlockwise. But the way to measure this red angle is by taking 360 minus theta. So yes, it's like going backwards, but actually the value you're going to get is going anticlockwise and until this red line. So in the fourth quadrant, to get the associated angle, it's 360 minus theta. Again, it doesn't seem like it makes any sense, but hopefully it will later on. So um, obviously these are in uh, uh, 180, 180, 360, uh, but you can also look at them in terms of radians as well. So this will be pi, this will be pi, uh, sorry, theta, then you have theta minus pi if you want to, uh, oh, pi minus theta in the second quadrant pi plus theta in the third quadrant and two pi minus theta. Now this relationship is very important because uh, later on you want to, you want a specific angle, for example, you want to the acute angle and then you want to the angle in the fourth quadrant. So by knowing the acute angle, you can easily shift to any of the other angles that you need. So um, sometimes you don't want to stay in the first, first quadrant. Um, another thing to note is that you have you'll have rotations as well. So you don't need to stay within 360. You can add another 360. So if this is my, let's say this is my angle 30, um, not 36, 30. Okay, so let's say I have an angle 30. I can also do another full rotation and come back at 30. So that's another angle that's related to my acute angle or any other angle. So if you have any theta, whether it's in the acute, whether it's in the first, second, third, fourth quadrant, so this theta can be anywhere, you can add a 360 or add a two pi and you would still get this associated angle. So you would, get, you would get the an angle that would have the same properties. And you could add as many 360s as as many two pi's. Some questions restrict them though. So hopefully this was clear. Do watch the second video where um, more examples are explained and it relates to this using uh, those facts.